Oh, there's some lava houses. These are lava houses, guys. This is lava. Some houses just sit on top. Hi, Jade. It's great Hi. out here. So I'm staying here. This is the lava temple and you okay. guys are in the Phoenix house. Wind. Does it feel like we're out at sea? Oh, yeah. It feels like we're on a boat. Do you understand this landscape? It's just lava. Just lava? This whole island is just lava. So here, this cutting board. So we are on the biggest island, Hawaii. As you can see, there are several volcanoes. Two biggest ones, Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea. This part down south, there is another volcano that actually went off two or three decades ago. You think you landed in another planet? It does feel like another planet. Big Island Planet. Hi, Jane. It's amazing out here. It, it feels like another planet. Yeah, right? I love it. So when people arrive here, I'm always like, you made it. You're on Mars. <laughs> They're like, whoa. This is the, all of this is Kilauea. So it's really not what we think of as a volcano. No, it's a shield volcano. So yeah, it's very wide and actually one of the most active in the world. Where did it erupt in the 90s? Actually? It flowed down from there and came this way. Okay. So did, did the lava just get stopped at the ocean? Because you can see the ocean right there. Oh, the okay. lava usually yeah. creates the new land. So after the 2018 eruption, the map changed. The lava river that came through at 50 miles per hour and went into the ocean, it added more land to the island of Hawaii. This is the Phoenix house. It's off the ground. Is there a reason for that? Does it have to be? Yes. The reason why is so that if volcano, if the lava comes down, we can take a tractor trailer and slip it under and take the whole house away. So you can see underneath how you can just take a trailer bed and just take it and pick it up and go. Yeah, welcome to the Phoenix house. <laughs> so everything is made in a very kind of utilitarian kind of way. So there's like a little dining area, there's hooks, there's, you know, places to put everything. You have a full kitchen. This is like recycled goods and like this is our drinking water we have a little camp stove under here so even being yeah. off grid you have a refrigerator yeah we have a great refrigerator it's pretty yeah. spacious we're on, we have solar panels on the roof and then the catchment tank is over there i believe it's five thousand gallons the bathroom is, it's pretty spacious for like such a small home and the floor goes right, you can see down, right? The water just filters, it's like a rain shower, so it just filters, it just comes straight down and into the lava. And you see it under the house, I saw it in the other pod yeah. this morning, mm -hmm. my daughter was showering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were going to create like a little hydroponic system down there, but we just ended up not. It works fine. Yeah, functional. Let it go, let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> The exterior of the place is all like recycled wood with, and it was like burned in a certain way. It's like a Japanese style. It's shishugi ban, yeah. So. You know, we could actually go through this map you have uh -huh. here. This is a little map of the Hawaiian Islands. So we're on the big island and we're like right here. And this is the youngest island. Like Kauai is the oldest and it goes down in sequence. Oh, so it makes sense that it's still going. It's still it's, going. It's yeah. still building. It's still forming. Yes. Oh, there it goes. 
All right. Do you feel like this is a bit like, it's like you feel like you're perched on top of... Perched on top of new land. Yeah, this right. is like brand new land. I mean, this is some of the newest land on earth, so. And it's funny because we don't think of land as something that's impermanent, right? right? Like that's why- Yeah, you think of it as very fixed, yeah. right? And you know, when the eruption came, I really got to terms with the impermanence of everything. I remember I would be driving down the highway and there were cracks in the highway with steam seeping out of them, like lava might erupt at any time. And I was coming here to help secure the place. You know, I'm wearing a gas mask and stuff and there's like lava gems flying into the sky. And, and I was just like absorbing the lessons of impermanence, you know? You know what, it's like life has always been uncertain. And so then it's like, okay, well, how are you, how are we gonna deal with that? And how are we gonna live our lives in the face of that impermanence, you know? You know, we can't control other people and we can't control events. We can only control how we respond to them and what we're going to create in the face of it. And so these are all big lessons that we learn when we're living out here and stuff like that. I love how functional the windows are with just wood dowels. Yeah, they designed every part of this. So none of this was prefabricated before. So they worked to like carve every little piece of window frame and every little dowel. And so here you're really getting a sense of being on top of it all. Yeah. So you're sleeping on top of a lava field <laughs> and you can see the volcano. And sometimes you can see it smoking, but not right now. It does feel like the Wild West, the Old West, where it's just, you know, a house and nothing else. A couple houses and you don't see much. Yeah, and just having the, like, just the freedom of, like, there's such a different feel when I sleep here of, like, just being off the grid. Just, like, there's not a lot of Wi-Fi signals. There's not a lot of crazy interference. So I think it helps one get away from it all and just be with yourself and the, the elements. Every house needs to have a little power shed. Okay. Great. Yeah. That's our water pressure tank. Oh, Those yeah. are our water filters. That's the hot water heater. Okay. And then our solar system is right oh, there. Yeah. So if it's rainy for a couple of days and yeah. there's not enough power coming into the solar system, we will run a generator and then we can power anything. You have two generators? Yeah, uh, this one is like a backup backup. backup. Yeah, you gotta have backup backups. When you live out here, you never know. Like I have backups of everything. I have backups of water pumps. Cause say the water pump breaks at 10 o'clock at night, we have to drive all the way to Hilo to get one and then bring it back and then install it. If I have it here already, then we can just install it, you know? So, <clears throat> And you'll see that there's, um, there's small gutter lines, like gutter lines that bring, that drop water into our catchment tank. And then it comes down here? Yeah, and it comes down and it wraps around the shed and then it goes here into and the catchment tank. And then I'm just gonna check and see how, it's about 80% full. <laughs> well, there was a time when this, this pipe broke off from the wind and I didn't know about it. And so I didn't know there was no water coming in here. And so it was going down, 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 down. And I was like, why are we running out of water? And so then we had to fix that and then get a water delivery here. So there's things you have to, like you can't just relax thinking everything's gonna be taken care of. And especially out here where the elements are so intense. Like, so you have to always like check and maintain the systems. So we also built this little caretaker pod right next to it. I call it a lava escape pod. Huh. So, yeah, so this is the little lava pod. All so right. you see right through the... Yeah, you can see right through. Yeah, but there's it. enough privacy. Yeah. It's oh, fine, yeah. Barely see through, right? Yeah, everything is pretty simple, close to the earth, close to nature. There is a shower that works here. <laughs> and then it goes right out underneath. It goes right out underneath. And the water, yeah, the water just filters down into the lava rock. Into the lava rock. So that it goes right out. You don't need to worry about catching the shower water. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's a sweet little place. It's kind of like a little Hong Kong apartment. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's so tiny but functional.
Because you even yeah. have a sink. I mean, you have all Yeah. Your I mean, at one point, my son and I actually lived here for a week. Nice. And we had like a little deep burner stove here and a water kettle. And at one point, I actually rented out the Phoenix house for a whole month to a writer who was came here to write her book. She just wanted to get away from everything and have no distraction and write her book. Yeah, because working from here is just... Well, distraction is it's just... <laughs> A lot of nature. Yeah, and you just end up like just contemplating and sitting with yourself. Just spend time with nature. Mm. And I remember when this tree was just like a little baby like that one. And you know, so there is like life out here. No. That this little this nice tree over here was used to be just a tiny tiny little sprout before. Yeah. Funny, so you're seeing this like re really rebirth everywhere. Yeah, there's rebirth everywhere. There's a lot of life on the lava. And when I first moved here, uh, my partner at the time, he was like, Jade, why do you want to live here? He's like, it's like a charnel ground. Why do you want to live here? There's no life. And I'm like, I love it. It's wonderful. It's magical. It's great. And so I loved having a view and a vista and like my mind could just be clear, you know? So. That's interesting. It is kind of like the Wild West out here where like if you buy on Lava Zone 1, you have to be prepared for it to, it to be taken. This used to be a residential neighborhood. It had a community center and a beach and everything. And then the lava came in 1990 and wiped it all out. So everyone still had the same lots and stuff like. Yeah. So is it tricky to sort of locate your lot once? You yeah, so you hire a surveyor yeah. and they come in with their equipment and stuff like that. This is my magical lava temple. Is this your house? Yeah. And how long have you been living here? So originally I'm from New York City, but I've been here for about 15 years. I came here and I saw this place was for sale and I immediately bought it. So you built this house? Yeah, I built this one. It was originally my, gonna be my yoga studio. It's just open, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything here is off grid. And yeah, I just wanted it open. I love the breeze. I love living in harmony with the elements. So, and we, we never lock our doors here because we don't have doors. <laughs> There's phone <laughs> things here too. Yeah. <laughs> We're so used to not having power on, but you really? know, lots of lights on and stuff like that. We actually have plenty of solar power during the day, and then at night we run on batteries. Just a little fridge. It's not plugged. Is it plugged in? It is plugged, plugged in. in. Okay. Yeah, but sometimes we have propane fridges, okay. but they eat a lot of propane. So it's okay. if we can have power, I have enough power that it can run it. It's fine. So with your solar, it's fine. You can solar <laughs> solar systems are so expensive. I've spent about thirty thousand dollars on my solar system. So off grid living. It's not more affordable, but it's one of the ways that you can live out in beautiful places that otherwise, I mean, there's no power grid to attach to here or anything like that, yeah. What, what about the land? Was the solar more expensive than the land? It was about the same. So it was about 30,000 for the land. And you got one plot, one? It's one sixth of an acre. It's 7,500 square feet. It includes, I built another cabin behind this one. And then there's a house okay. that was a shell. And then I enclosed it, added water, okay. solar. And then I built this one as my yoga studio. And then it just evolved into more. This is like my little bathroom. And there's like, these stones are from Waipio Valley, actually. This is lava? Yeah, this is a lava rock shower. We had a composting toilet for many years, and I used to have guests here and then empty their compost. Like, now we have a flush toilet. That was a luxury. So your water heater is quite compact. We have two propane tanks that are sitting outside that fuel it, and then our stove is also on propane. Uh -huh. oh, so this is a stove? little camp stove, and then you just get a propane, a propane tank. That's a cute stove, though, because it has an yeah. oven with it. You're yeah, there's a cute little oven. <laughs> and then our water is through water catchment. We have two big water catchment tanks. We hold about 4,000 gallons. How do you make sure your water, you can drink your water? We have a Berkey filter, so this is pretty good. And then we also have a UV filter. So we do double. And then we also put it through a bit of filter. So we, we do it like three times. It's like triple purified. 
You also need to come upstairs if you like. Uh, so this was, when I first designed it, I was like, okay, I want it to kind of be open, and then I just need it to be like the space of two carports. <laughs> so that's how I decided the space of it. And so the downstairs used to be two carports, and then I put carpets and added day beds and added more. And so, yeah, this eventually just became kind of like a half living space, half, half temple space where I do sound healing and stuff like that. I'm just welcoming you here to this space. You sleep? Is this a bedroom? Yeah, like this is our normal home. And you normally have windows yeah. open, like this wind coming through. Oh, we love it. Normal. Yeah. And normal. sometimes it shakes the house. This is actually a, a pretty calm day. And sometimes we have earthquakes and stuff like that. So we're, we're living with elemental harmony. So I'm kind of here by the grace of Pele. Who is Pele? Pele is the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. She's also the goddess of transformation. This is my kumu, my hula kumu. This is when the lava was flowing into the ocean. She's Kumu Ehulani Stefani. So yeah, she has come and blessed this place as well. And we try to live in harmony and in respect with the elemental forces that live here. When I first moved here, I got insurance on the place, but it wasn't worth it. I was like, you know what? If lava takes it, she takes it. Pele gives and she takes. And I'm thankful and grateful for every day I get to live here. When I moved here in 2009, there was like no other houses except Doug next door. And so then people started building here because the land is cheap. You know, well, the land is one of the most affordable places in all of Hawaii. People can live pretty simply. And this is kind of like the Wild West. There's not a lot of rules and you got to make sure you get along with your neighbors. You're on the lava, right? Pretty much? Yeah, yeah. How are you set up? You have water catchments and you have like, ha two catchments. Oh, wow. You have a great garden. It's way more than I thought. So, are you putting soil on top of the lava? We, we had bought truckloads of soil initially. And I get lots of the mulch from the city. So what I did was kind of dig down a little bit where I could, and then just pile soil. So it's maybe like two or three feet of soil. Or you, can, you can kind of imagine how. Because you wouldn't be able to plant on right on just lava. You can't do anything. But well, like, people do like you know a pail full of soil and put a coconut, <laughs> and it'll grow. Because it's so porous. Uh huh. Yeah. The garden is just impressive. Oh, there's an outdoor shower. Oh, that's fun. Is that a dust? I mean, um, for something else? Oh, so agriculture. And it's a bathtub now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and is this affordable out here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about seven to ten thousand for, wow. for these. So why is it affordable? Because of the lava? <laughs> yeah, I think they say there's like about a one percent chance every year. Okay, so within a hundred years, you're pretty much gonna. Yeah. About six years ago, the, the lava flowed over there, about six miles away. Do you enjoy this, this sort of yeah, scape? Well, this I don't know what you call it. Uh, no. <laughs> do you? It's a special, it's a almost, we were saying almost other planet feel. Like. Yeah, oh, totally, totally. And at one point the lava was going like in 2018, it was doing like 50 miles per hour, a huge river of lava, 50 miles. That's like highway speed. And it was, it was why it looks like, like a river, a river of lava just came through. So this one is called the Ohana house. And this one was because, so I had this wonderful family. They stayed at my lava temple for a weekend. They're like, how do we, keep a part of this with us. And I was like, well, there's two lots for sale right behind me. And they said, call your broker. The same day they bought these two lots. And then they, they looked at the Phoenix house. They were like, we want the same person who built that to build this one. And they had the Ohana house built for families. So it's like a tiny home for families. What does Ohana mean? Family. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. yeah, so you see this is split. Yes, so there's two pods. And the roof is just a plexiglass? Yeah. 
there's an actual roof on both pods too. So again, it's designed in a way that if the lava came, you could pick up this pod and then you could pick up that pod and rescue them to go somewhere else if the lava came. We live on an active volcano, so you have to be prepared. Yeah. Also like the way the plexiglass is installed, it allows uh, for the wind to sort of... Right, and it also is done in such a way that rainwater doesn't really come in here, but the sunshine and the breeze do, so... So what the elements you want, right. you'll allow them in. Yeah, it's sweet. Here's the master bedroom. Just built yeah. in. Everything's, uh -huh. built Everything's built in, in yes. It's Everything is custom made. And this is the dining dining table. This is the dining there. table. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've had really great dinner parties out here. The kitchen is really sweet. Get a nice little breeze over here. Yeah. The sink here is different. This is just a utility sink, but it fits. <laughs> so there's a mix of unexpected materials but being made nicely. And everything yeah. here is custom made as well. So we also have a little camp stove oh, with yeah. propane. You can move this out onto the lanai. So you could even just bring this out and cook outside. And I, I like this as an office too. I'll just bring my laptop out here and sit with the view of the volcano and the nice breeze. And then here's the bathroom. So yeah, everything is very simple. And, and again, yeah, the shower just goes right down into the... And then this oh, is the second bedroom, which is great for kids with the bunk beds and stuff. It looks, you know, pretty safe and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. It's pretty sturdy. The little ladders right built into the wall. Oh, so you're using the, the, the beams. That's part the, of the ladder, yeah. The, that's quite a small. I like this yeah. outdoor area. I need, the breeze here is beautiful. Yeah, the breeze is great. And then the lights at night is really cool too, like when you see all the lights at night. Yeah. This becomes part of the house, right? Yeah. yeah. This is like the dining t dining area. So. And then you have a great view of the volcano. Okay, so this is where the power shed is. So we only run on two batteries. These two batteries power everything. So what are we hearing? So that's just the solar system singing. <laughs> if like there's not enough sunshine, then we would bring this generator out onto the porch and we would run the generator to kind of charge up the batteries. These two propane tanks run the hot water. This is a, a water pressure tank. And we keep everything stocked well so that, say the road gets cut off by lava, which is, it's happened before where we thought that like the lava might cross the road and then there's no way to get out of Lower Puna. You need to have emergency supplies for everything. I, I also noticed that they were doing roads this morning. Yeah, so my neighborhood friends, they were adding more gravel, filling in the potholes and stuff like that. Who does the roads? Is it so there's no actual neighborhood whatever. It's just um, some nice, nice people that care about our community. They all pull together some funds and we just get a truckload of cinder, 400, 500 bucks, and then they volunteer their time to like fill in the potholes and stuff. So there's no government Road building, no. electric, no. water, nothing, nothing. No services, no mail. No mail? No, yeah, nothing. So you have addresses. Not oh, really. Not really. I have a, a GPS link where I send people. And so it'll keep changing. Yeah. The lava itself changes. This doesn't seem that permanent. It seems crumbly. Yeah, and then eventually in a few decades, it will become soil. Will it really? Yeah, yeah. it can. Yeah. And do you think you'll be here? Like, will you stay for a couple days? I don't know. Because if anything major happens, the nearest hospital is in Hilo, which is an hour away. So it's, yeah. again, temporary like everything. Your time here, yeah. it's done something for you. It's been... It's been wonderful. I mean, my yeah. son grew up here. Like, who else can say they grew up on a lava field? <laughs> Just another day out on the lava. <laughs>